iOS comes with some fantastic functionality for handling networking. And in particular, the URL session class makes it surprisingly easy to upload and download data. If we combine that with the codable protocol we just added to our order class, plus a new struct called URL request, we can write code to upload and download data and even update our UI in only 20 or so lines of code. First things first, in our checkout view, we're gonna go ahead and add a new method which will handle placing an order. So I'll say down here, func place order and async function. Now, just like when we're downloading stuff, using URL session to upload stuff is done asynchronously, you must mark your function as being async. We can now go ahead and call that from our place order button. There's an empty action there right now. I'll modify that so inside there, we call place order. However, that code will not work. And for a nice change, Swift's actually fairly clear about why it doesn't work. It's saying, we're trying to make an async function call from a function that does not support concurrency. And that means is, our button here expects to be able to run its action synchronously, not asynchronously. It wants to run it and wait for it to finish fully and then update the UI. That's what it wants to do. But it can't do that because place orders an async function. And so, in we said, you know, please await for it. It's still not gonna work. The button just does not know how to wait. Now, previously I said to you that the onAppear modifier does not work with async functions and instead we have to use a task modifier. That is not possible here. You know, we're not doing Swift UI layout. There's no modifiers here. This is just pure action code for our button. However, Swift provides an alternative. We can create a new task basically out of thin air, right here. And that will run any kind of asynchronous code we want. In fact, all it takes is placing this whole await place order code inside a task, like that. And now we're all set. That code will correctly run the place order function asynchronously without annoying the button too much. Of course, the function itself doesn't do anything yet, but we'll fix that next. Now inside here, we've got to do three things. First things first, we've got to convert, convert our order object here into some JSON data that can be sent over the network. Second, we've got to tell Swift how to send the data. And third, run the request and then do something with the response, whatever we want to. Uh, firstly, this is straightforward because we've made this thing convert to uh, conform to codable already. And so our first step is to use JSON encoder to encode it to be some data. So I'll, in here I'll say uh, guard let encoded equals try question mark JSON encoder encoder dot encode that order else. If we fail to do that, just print fail to encode order and bail out. Didn't work for some bizarre reason, just, just get out of there. The second step is telling Swift how to send the data. And this requires a new struct type called URL request like a more advanced version of regular URL, we can now add options for extra information, like what type of request we're sending, or what user data do we want to attach, whatever we want. Now we've got to attach things to the request in very specific ways. So uh, the server at the other end knows what to expect, knows what's being sent. And so this means attaching two extra pieces of information. One is called the HTTP method, this determines how data should be sent. There are various methods out there, but really the main two by a massive, massive majority are get and post. Get means I want to read data from a server. Post means I want to write data to the server. Here, we want to write our cupcake message. Give me five cupcakes, please. So we're gonna use post. Second, we have to tell the server the content type of our data. What kind of things actually being sent? This affects the way the server treats the data. This is a specified in what's called a MIME type, which is a very old way of handling data designed for um, attaching email uh, messages to emails, like files and JPEGs, and zip files, whatever. Uh, it's got several thousand very specific options here. In our case, we're always saying it's some application JSON to work with. So 
The next code for our place order method, we're gonna to have to go and create a URL request object. We'll then configure it to send our JSON data using a post, writing it. We can then use URL session to actually do the upload. But there's a much bigger question here. Where are we uploading to? Like, where is it gonna go? And I don't think you're here to learn how to set up your own web server, right? That's a whole other course. Um, instead, we're gonna use a really helpful testing API called recres.in, R-E-Q-R-E-S.in, and it means we can send any data we want to this test server, and it'll automatically just send it back to us. It'll just mirror it back. Whatever we send, we'll get it back. And this is a great way of prototyping your code because you get real data back from whatever you send. So, add this code to place order now. First up, our URL is a URL with a string of https colon slash slash requres dot in api cupcakes. Then our request is URL request with URL URL. Then request dot set value, and we're going to say application slash JSON for the header field content type. Then request HTTP method is post. So we're saying I want to write the post information and the information has a type of application JSON. So it's from JSON that means something to my application. Notice how there's an exclamation mark here on the URL string. This is because making a URL from a string can fail. It can go wrong. Maybe you've put past an invalid string or an empty string or who knows what. You get a bad URL back and it's done using optionals. If it could not convert a URL, so a string into the URL, you get back a nil value. The exclamation mark means don't give me back an optional. Always give me back a real non-optional value here to the point where if I've given you a bad URL, just crash my code. It's okay here. I have literally hand typed that URL. I know it's correct. There's no way of handling errors from ones I've typed. Like It's exactly correct. There's no string interpolations here that might cause problems. Anyway, at this point, we are now all set to make our network request, which means we'll use a new method called URL session dot shared dot upload and the request we just said. So we'll say as a do block, let data underscore, come on, data underscore, equals try await, come on Hudson, try await, URL session shared upload for, our request from our encoded data with no delegate. And then handle the result. If any errors happen, we'll just catch them all and say print checkout failed. Now for the important work. We've got to read the result from our request and do something with it when it all worked correctly. If something's gone wrong, that code there won't be hit. Like line 53 will not go be hit at all. It'll jump straight to this catch block down here and print checkout failed. We haven't got to worry about errors. We just care about it actually working correctly. And because we're using recres.in, we're gonna get back the same order we sent, which means we can use JSON decoder to convert that JSON data back into an order object. To confirm everything's worked correctly, and there's no problems in our code, we're gonna show a little alert with a confirmation message with details of our order. But we're gonna use the decoded version, not the original. And yes, they should be the same thing, right? Send it out, get it back, that's how it works. But if it isn't the same thing, I want to know now. So we're making sure um, we are the same. We're using that now. Show an alert requires new properties, so I'll, I'll add uh, them now. I'll leave that comment there. We'll say up here, there is an at state, private var, confirmation message, empty string, and at state, private var, showing confirmation is false. And we've got to make an alert modifier down here somewhere uh, next to our nav stuff. Uh, with alert showing, attach that Boolean. So I'll say dot alert, thank you and is presented, we bound to dollar showing confirmation. 
Inside there's a button saying, just okay is fine. And then open and close braces, it'll go away by itself. We're gonna add a little message to. Message, using text, confirmation message. And now we can finish off our networking code down here because we're gonna decode the data we got back from our upload. The response we had will be our JSON in different format. So down here, we can decode that somehow, use it to provide our custom confirmation message text, and then set showing confirmation to be true so it appears on the screen. If it fails, again, just go ahead and print a message down here, it's fine. So we'll say here, let decoded order equals try JSON decoder dot decode and order dot self from our data. And then our message is, uh, let's say your order for, order for, uh, we'll have X, like three times vanilla cupcakes, for example, uh, that will be uh, decoded order dot quantity X, and then let's say uh, order dot types decoded order dot type dot lowercase. There we go. Uh, cupcakes is on its way. There we go. And then we'll say showing confirmation equals true. And with that final piece of code all being well, our project's done. Let's find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and select when it appears. Come on, you can do it. Or not. There we go. I'll select my cake type to be chocolate. I'll ask for five chocolate cupcakes. Then press delivery details. And my name's gonna be Paul Hudson. Oops, Paul Hudson. Uh, 555 Taylor Swift. Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee. No, that's not zip code, that's a state. 11111, I don't know zip code, sorry. Um, and now press checkout. There's our order total and our async image. And then place order, boom. So that message there is coming back from RecRes in, RecRes in even. That's not our original thing here. So it's using decoded order here and here, which we got back from our upload call. So our networking works. In fact, our whole app works. That finishes it all off now. We can now start configuring, entering delivery details, get a message back, it all works correctly. We're done. Well, I'm done. You still have some challenges to do.